To complete the model, we still need to address the portion where assemblies move along a conveyor to a packaging area where we will need two workers to package each of the assemblies and then we will move it over to, to the loading area where we will batch them in groups of 10 before they are shipped out. So I'm going to create my two agent types. I'm going to go to the small factory, right click new agent type. And the first one will be a package that I will create from scratch, use it in flowchart as a normal agent or entity. I don't want any animation, no parameters, and finish. I'm going to draw my package as a rectangle. that will just be colored in a brown and it will be the same size roughly. Let's make it slightly larger. All right, <clears throat> and then I also want to create a worker. I'm going to create a new agent type, which I'm going to call worker. Or let's make it just person. And I will use them in the flowchart. But in this particular case, I will use them as a resource unit. I'm looking for a 2D, and I'm just going to use this person image, which is a simple 2D, no parameters, and click finish. Now, if I zoom into this figurine, it seems to be a group. I can see where it's centered, but this looks like a fairly involved little uh, image. So if I right click, you see that it is possible to ungroup it, which I'm not going to do now. Suffice to say that in this figurine somewhere, there might be something that I want to change the color of at a later stage to show which of my workers are busy and which aren't. So with that, I'm done with my person, done with my packages, assembly, door, and the body, and I can close all of them. Let's just add the space markup elements. Again, the space markup is to link the model logic with my animation on my process modeling library. Let's start by drawing the areas. I'm going to use a polygon, double click on it. And let me just zoom into this packaging area. <clears throat> and in the end, I can just double click and it will close it for me. I'm going to call this space packaging. I'm going to make it visible, but leave the location layout to be random, and you're welcome to go and play with different values in terms of having them arranged, and you can see what the difference is. Let me draw another one. That area I'm going to call space loading. And finally, I'm going to draw an area where my parts are just going, my assemblies are just going to wait to be to be packaged. And that will do just the outside.
and then I can draw my conveyor. I'm going to change the conveyor's appearance to again look like a conveyor and the line width I think the last time was about 1.8 that looks about right and I'm a little bit pedantic so I'm going to zoom in quite a bit And this one I'm going to call Space Conveyor Assembly. Right, the one area that I also need to draw is just a polygon for where the workers are going to be. I'm not going to make my workers kind of run around. We will do that at a later stage in another model where we will have really workers that move around and pick up stuff and carry it or travel around with, with trolleys. This area I'm just going to call space workers. Right, now we need to move over to our logic. Just move the sink all the way out. From the assembler, once the units leave, they need to move onto the conveyor. Now, remember that the capacity of the assembler, which pulls out of the resource pool called resource assembler, there are eight of these units. So it is possible that two assemblies are being completed at the same time and if we directly put a conveyor in here it may crash and any logic may come back and say but I didn't know what to do with this with this entity I wanted to throw it out the outport but there was nowhere for it to go because the there is no space on the conveyor yet and for that purpose we're just going to put in a queue that literally is Wasn't very nice. See if we can add it a little bit better. No, still not. Let's delete that connector. I'm just going to call this Q assembly. And it really, again, is just a buffer just to have some space for the entities to wait until it moves onto or get a space onto the conveyor. I'm going to call this conveyor assembly and looking at the properties, it will be defined by a path. I then need to specify the location and it picks up both my paths that are usable as conveyors. I'm interested in the conveyor assembly. And the speed is one meter per second. I'm going to leave that default. And also it is an accumulating conveyor. If you untick this and it's not an accumulating conveyor, units will not be able to proceed. It will typically be like a automotive assembly plant where if the assembly line stops, everything stops. There can be no accumulation on the conveyor. So it depends on the type of, of conveyor setup that you, that you need. The default is that it is an accumulating conveyor. I'm going to change the agent's length because now I'm working with an assembly so I don't have access to the body and its width. Or alternatively, I can again get access to my agent it will pick up the assembly that it is an assembly dot control space and there I can get the scale object which I had when I created the default value for parameter width for the body and there I have the convert to length units option again so I can do that by converting the width of 
the assembly. But in this case, I'm just going to take a bit of a shortcut and just say, uh, let's make it two meters or even 1.5. So I just adjust the length in terms of how much space it takes up on the, on the conveyor. And next, once the entities are at the end of the conveyor, I want them to appear in this area to wait. And then I'm going to con convert the assemblies into packages. Now, I'm not aware of another block that can do that for me other than the assembler. So I'm going to add the assembler here. Zoom in so I can align it. And I'm going to call this assembler just packaging. And I'm going to change the second quantity to zero, which means there will only be one entity coming in and one entity going out. Let's just move this name to the bottom. And the new agent that will be created at the end of this assembly process is going to be a package. So we get assemblies in and packages go out. I want the packaging to make use of the workers or the persons that I've, that I've created. And for that, we're going to introduce another resource pool. So I'm just dragging it over to my workspace. Call it resource workers. And let's define the capacity 30. But the new resource units that are being created oops, are now not the default agents, but I'm going to make them persons. And I'm going to set their home location. So although they are defined as moving resources, they will not be moving at all. I'm going to define the resource units here, a home location, which is different than what we did with the assembler. And I'm going to put them in space workers. Now remember, space workers is randomly organized. And if I go save my model and go back to the assembler, I can now define what the resource sets are. And I can say I need resource workers. But instead of one, let's say that we need two persons. Oops. And again, let's make the delay time somewhere between 5, 10, 15 in terms of a triangular distribution. And we changed the units from seconds. This is an annoying message. Seconds to minutes. And I leave everything else untouched. And you can play around with with changing things, but be sure to kind of know what you're actually doing. Now, after the units are packaged, I want them to appear in the loading area. But bef maybe before we get that, the queue associated with assemblies waiting to be packaged, I'm going to associate with space awaiting packaging, which means that once the assemblies come off the conveyor, they will appear inside this little area over here. And only once they're packaged, they'll jump into the packaging area. Now, to do that, I also need to set the animation so that the, the agent location of the delay is associated with a space markup element. And for that, I'm associating the packaging area with space package. I'm not going to, at this point, associate the location of the assembled agents uh, once, it's, once they're done. Instead, I'm going to introduce batch block. And the batch block converts a number of agents into one agent by either discarding the original agent and creating a new one that will be called a permanent batch, or by adding the original agent to the contents of the new agent, which is a temporary batch. 
So you can read more by looking at the process modeling library. I'm just going to call this loading. And it seems that I would have been able to package one or move from an assembly to a package using a batch block of one entity being batched into the new entity type. Um, so I'm just going to, mind you, let's keep, keep the final batch just a smarty dot, the regular agent. So it seems that the element type that comes in, which is a package, can be converted into a new agent if it is a permanent, um, if it is a permanent batch. Here I actually see that the new batch is of type uh, general agent and I can set that or I can create a custom, ag uh, a custom agent type from, from here as well. And I want the batch size to be 10 units and I want to associate the location, the, the agent location with the loading area. So while the agent the agents are waiting to be lo will to, to be batched. They will appear here in the loading area. And finally, if to just see that I do have a completed batch, I'm going to add a delay, which will just be let's make it a fixed time of. Of five minutes and we can make it the maximum capacity it literally is just so that we can see the final batch and then I connect my delay block to the end to my sink to make it a little bit more kind of visible let's rather add a point node down here just outside the door and I call that space ship And let's associate the agent location with space ship. And in the loading area, let's create a new custom agent type called a batch. It doesn't give me the option to say that I want to use this in a flowchart because I used the hyperlink that is already inside the the flowchart area, so it assumes that is what I want. I want to create my own animation, no parameters, and fix it. So on the origin, let's just go and create our picture here. And there I have my batch of 10 assemblies. Sorry, 10 packages. So let me save that model. Go back to my main. It picks up now that I want to create a new batch. I'm not going to change the time. Oops, I probably should just go back here and change my scaling again to say that one of these, that length of the ruler corresponds to one meter. So in my main model, in the loading, I will now create a batch. And once it moves out of the batching block, it will move into the delay and locate itself on the shipment node. And let's just move that out a little bit. It may be in the way there. So if we save, let's see if we have something that is useful and running.
Right, so as my model runs, I can actually see here are all of my workers. They are scattered randomly in that area. When the assemblies come through, they are being packaged. Unfortunately, I cannot see which of my workers are currently busy and which of them are idle. But as the packaging gets completed, the items move over to loading. And I should see one of my batches being created soon. And there it is. It gets packaged. It stays there for a while. And then it moves off. So I just add the delay so that I can at least see my batch. All right, so we're nearing completion. Let's stop here and add a little bit more of these statistical graphs for ourselves. Let's add this. We've got this one. Let's add another one. And here I want to use, for example, a time stack chart. We're really running out of a little bit of space here. And I want to make the first one busy units. And the value would be pointing to the resource pool of my workers. So I start typing resource control space. It picks up resource assemblers and the resource workers. And inside that resource pool, I can call the dot busy function, which already gives me a method to, to get hold of the number of busy units. I'm going to color them red. And then I'm going to add the idle workers, calling the same pool. And idle give is a method that returns the number of idle units. And these I'm going to make green. Let's make it a brighter green. Oh, that's lime. And I know that the sum of these two, that's why I'm using a stacked chart. I would likely not have to fix the the chart, but it would be possible to set it to whatever the capacity is. But since I add both busy and the idle, the sum, because it's a stack chart, the sum actually gives me the capacity. And should be the units that are breaking down, then they will, um, I will actually see a dip in the overall, in the overall chart. Right, so let's see if that adds something visual to my model that is useful. So as the time runs, I see that all of my units are currently idle. Let's just speed up the model. And as the packages come in, I see because we use two people at a time, I can actually see what the utilization is in terms of how many of my workers are currently busy. A final bit of animation that we can add is to make our workers change color whenever they become busy or when they become idle. And while there are very kind of complex ways of doing it, AnyLogic has made it quite simple. So if we go to resource workers, we see that there are a number of actions on that you can perform, code that you can create. If I hover my mouse over on new unit, I see that there's a parameter called unit, which is the resource unit that was just created. And similarly, on release or on Cs, I have a local variable or parameter that's called unit that I can actually get my hands on. Similar to what we had 
earlier when we called the agent, which is the entity that flows through the process modeling library. Now on the new unit, I'm going to take each unit, start typing unit, and I see that when I press control space, it brings up unit, it knows that it is of type person, which means it should be able to see the local variables and the objects. And I'm interested in that shape body, and they've conveniently created one where we can just set the full color directly. And if we expand this process properties block, then I can call utilities color again and initially set the units to be green. In the same way, I'm going to copy on C's. That entity should become red. And when it's released, it should become green again. And I can change the colors to see what my resource units, in what state are they actually in. And that is it. I should be able to save my model and run it. And I should now be able to see specifically which one of my agents are busy or idle whenever an assembly moves into the packaging area. So they are too busy, two more. If I speed it up, I can actually see them change back to green when they're idle. If I don't like the noise within which the entities or the workers are standing uh, in terms of you think it's a little bit messy, I don't change their layout in the logical block of the resource workers. Instead, I go to the space markup element that represents their place and I change the location layout to be arranged. And now if I save the model, build it and run it, I should see more order among my workers. And here we have a model that is running. It's got some visual elements. At this point, we've built it with the main purpose to just show some of the functionality. One can now start to, to set this model up to answer specific questions. And we will look at that in a separate video.